Receiving simulator transmission. Uploading transmitted feed. Initializing playback sequence. Log execute. Hey everyone, Cypher here, and welcome back to Cypher Plays Pokemon Heart Gold Nuzlocke. In the last episode, we took on the Azalea Town Gym, where we handily trounced Bugsy, thanks to Victoria once again. As you can see, Geodude is a very useful Pokemon for this early game. And quite honestly, I'm glad for it, because without her, I don't think I would have had as easy of a time. Uh, from my sidebar, you can clearly see that I have changed one member of my team. I put Jason in the box and brought Mizune, that for reasons that we'll be seeing here. We're going to be progressing through Ilex Forest for now. As we can see, there's this guy here, but he's not a trainer. Oh man, my boss is going to be angry. The farfetch that cut trees for charcoal took off in the forest. Can you catch them for me? Farfetch to have sensitive ears. If you, step up, if you step on a branch, they will face toward you. That's your chance. Sneak up from, from behind and catch them. You think you can do that? Sure, why not? Might as well help you out at least a little bit. Well, there are still wild Pokemon to encounter here, but thankfully I already caught Paris here when I first arrived in Azalea Town, so we'll be fine. So yeah, this is the gimmick. Just don't step on the branches unless you want the Farfetch to face a specific way. And then just follow the path to get behind it. You have to be directly behind the Farfetch, otherwise it'll run away. And surprisingly, that doesn't cause it to face the other way. Bang into a battle. Cute. If this were a ROM hack, I'm sure somebody would have edited it in such a way to make that be the case, but not the case here. And that one farfetched down. Oh, you found a farfetch. Thank you. But there's one more missing. You step on a branch, you'll face that way, remember? Okay. Let's just move on, because there's not that much left. i grab this item here. Selling fodder, since this is a Nuzlocke, so I can't use a revive. Can't catch it from in front. I think I'll just throw up our pal after this, just because this is starting to get a little annoying. Did buy a few uh, propels just for this because since we don't have anything to catch here and go that way Honestly, catch a bit trickier than the first one, but not too tricky. Wow, you got both of them. Thank you so much. My boss's Pokemon won't obey me because I don't have a badge. You, you saved me. That looks like your boss is coming to see why it's taking me so long. Ah, my far and fetched. Really, dude? 
Those are your nicknames. With that, you found them for us, kid. Without them, we wouldn't be able to cut trees or charcoal. Thanks, kid. Now, how can I thank you? I know. Here, take this. Obtained HMO1. That's the HM cut. Teach that to a Pokemon to clear small trees. Of course, you have to have the gym badge from Azalea Town to use it. Well, if we go back to Azalea Town, once these guys leave, we can get some charcoal from him, but I'm not going to be worrying about that right now. Uh, I'm going to start off by using Cut. And the reason that I swapped Mizumi in is because I know that for a fact that she can use Cut. I could teach it to Ash, but that's a terrible move, and I don't remember where the move deleter is, so I want to hold off on any HMs that I don't want to keep around. Just gonna get rid of Hyper Fang. I never really used it. I suppose having Mizune in my party demonstrates that I do actually keep my reserves trained up off screen between episodes, just so that in case there is any reason that I have to swap them in, they're not lagging behind uh, a great deal. Anyway, let's throw up another repel. Uh, that Everstone in my bag, you get that by bringing the Togepi back to Elm and letting him see it. Personally, not all that useful a reward, in my opinion, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. Next attack, more selling fodder. Uh, and that green shard I got from smashing rocks back in Violet City. Just because I don't exactly... It, like, I wasn't looking... There was a hidden item that I could access in... Or, rather, an item that I could access that I forgot about in Violet City. That, once I had rock smash, but... I didn't think it was all that important. It was just a... Hyper Potion. Which, while useful, isn't super, super useful. Anyway, we want to go this way because this guy right here... As we can clearly see, he's hitting his head against a tree for whatever reason. Is a move tutor. What am I doing? I'm shaking trees using headbutt. It's fun. Here, you try it with your Pokemon, too. Which Pokemon should learn it? I'm going to have Ash learn it. So, goodbye, Tackle, because Headbutt has 20 more power than Tackle, at least in my game, because I'm using the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to bring moves to their Gen 5 stats. So, 70 power, normal type move, chance of flinching. Pretty useful on something as fast as Ash. Granted, Ash is more of a special attacker, but that Brave Nature is going to Give him at least some attack strength. There. How do you like it? Your Ash looks stronger. You, now, you can use this on trees. And sometimes nothing will happen. Sometimes Pokemon will fall out of them. I'm personally not going to worry about it for right now. I'm just going to save headbutting trees in past areas for a bit later. When I want to catch some more Pokemon. But for now, we can just progress onward. So, let's see. Kimono girl, kimono girl, lost and all alone. Poor girl lost in the dark, Elex Forest. Okay, that's a weird song, but whatever. What? You remember me from Violet City? You must be imagining. Anyway, will you show me how to get out of this forest? Sure. Will? Aren't you lost in the forest as well? How do you know how to get out of here? I don't, but I guess Pariah does. Wow, are you going to show me how to get out? You are such a smart Pokemon. See you. Okay. Well, thanks, Mariah. Despite your moniker as the King of Ghosts, I don't see you being, well, as terrible as your namesake. Yeah, Pariah, Dark, King of Ghosts, Danny Phantom. Bit of a 
stretch, but I think it works. Uh, I did actually look into his IVs, at least for speed, and Pariah actually has a very terrible speed IV. It's between 0 and 4, which, yikes, that is just terrible for a ghastly. I suppose at the very least, though, he had to have something holding him back, considering he has a good nature, he's a shiny, and he's been pretty much godsend. Anyway, we're here on Route 34, and the reason that I have Pariah in the lead is because I want to see if I can run into something here. Just gonna avoid trainers for now, and let's see if we found something. Nope, I already have you. So let's run. Because on this route, you can find Drowsy, which is alright, and Abra, which is amazing, but Abra is pretty rare. But the reason that I'm leaning with Baraya instead of, say, Beefwee, was if I ran into an Abra, I could just use Mean Look to basically shut down anything that I can do. But unfortunately, it seems that I couldn't, so we're going to see about Beefwee. Now, Drowsy isn't the best Pokemon to put to try and put to sleep because it might have Insomnia for its ability. But might as well see what we got. Yep, it has Insomnia, and it put Beefy to sleep. To sleep, so that's bad. But oh well. Now, if we shouldn't be in too much trouble, I don't think that this Drowsy really has anything that it can do that can actually hurt if we. Come on, wake up. Really, this thing can only use Hypnosis, Disable, and Confusion. Not a terrible move set for this early on, but... Oh, and Pound, I guess, but... Pound isn't really what you look for in a Psychic type. And Confusion stat, okay. Well... I don't think that'll make it easier to catch, but should do a little something. Anyway, let's use Gust. And you know what? I'm going to try catching this thing. I know that I probably could have used a Great Ball or something better, but... Well, there goes Gust. Come on, let's just do another confusion. Just gonna keep willing it down. I know that I said that you really shouldn't bother willing it down too much at this early stage, but I guess the fall-off for Drowsy is a bit... I don't actually remember Drowsy's catch rate, so I think it might be a little less than what we've been catching up to this point. I do kind of wish I had something for when uh, sleep doesn't work, because I could definitely use it right about now. Like, I could probably have used Jason for this, but I needed a cut to get through Ilex Forest, so there we go. Okay, you know what? Let's throw a Great Ball. See if that does the trick. And there we go, thankfully. Alright. And just because I don't have a better name for you, I'm just going to go with the surname at the last nickname that I used for a drowsy. At least I think this is how it's spelled it. 
If not, I don't entirely care. Droid probably isn't going to be joining the team unless something really bad happens. And here we see a new building. Grandpa! And what do you know, it's Lyra. Good work, Grandpa. The Pokemon you raised for me has been uh, as healthy as can be. You look fit, too. Hi, Cypher. Let me introduce you. This is Cypher. He's a trainer. He seems to be getting better at raising Pokemon. Well, not as good as you, Grandpa, of course. Call me Cypher. Grandma, let me introduce you, my friend Cypher. Aha, so this is your boyfriend. I see. Hmm. What? Grandma, what are you talking about? He just happens to live nearby. <laughs> I know, I know. Since you brought him here, Lyra, you must be sure about his talent. Right, Cypher? Come and see us anytime. Well, I better go now. See ya. You're very quick to jet off, Lyra. Oh, I almost forgot. Here, this is my Pokegear number. Okay, finally registered Lyra. Not that I'm going to be calling her all that often. You know you can talk to your Pokemon as they follow you. Yes, we've known about this since episode one. No need to explain this to me. They do all sorts of cute stuff on the road and in towns. I'm taking notes every time they do funny things. Give me a call and I'll share some of them with you. Okay, well, she just explained the reason to call her. Grandma! Don't, don't you say anything. We are both trainers and we are supposed to exchange numbers. That's all. Lyra, you really need to take a chill pill. Your grandmother just did some light teasing and you're freaking out like that. I have an idea. I'll give you our numbers. Then you can check on the Pokemon we raised for you. So yeah, this is the daycare, pretty much similar to the one that I used in Fire Red, but unlike that one, we can actually get Pokemon to breed here if they are in the same egg groups. Not that I'll be able to use breeding because my Nuzlocke rules prevent breeding during the main story. Well, from time to time, when you give us your Pokemon to raise, I'll be happy to have a use for this Pokegear my grandchild gave me. Alright, well with that, we can progress onward. That cop, if it were night, would challenge us to a battle, but because it's day, we're not going to be able to fight him. But I'll come back to this route for training a bit later. I want to kind of avoid fights for right now, because... I'm actually very close to my current level cap, and I just want to get past that. Though, when I said that this game does take a difficulty curve in gym leaders, starting with Bugsy, I wasn't kidding. Even though I did wipe out Bugsy pretty easily last episode, the next gym is the one that every kid who's ever played either the Gen 2 versions of this game, or the or these remakes, knows as kind of a wall to climb for one particular Pokemon. But I will save that for when we actually face that Pokemon. I do have a strategy in mind. Okay, before we go, I want to do two last things. We're going to go in here first, because this is the game corner. I've been waiting to get to this point. My name is Mr. Game. My heart pounds with excitement when people enjoy my coin game. In fact, that's what I live for. You look like quite a challenger. Why don't you play my coin game? You can get fabulous prizes if you manage to collect a lot of coins. Sure, why not? All right, here's your coin case. Okay, this game is basically Voltorb Flip. It's like Minesweeper, 
just playing for coins. I personally like it a little more than, uh, say, the slot machines, though I'm obviously an odd one out on that. I know a lot of people prefer the slot machines. Show me how you play, and my heart will pound with excitement. Alright, well, I will be handling most of that off-screen, because I just want to get some, some stuff from the prize counter for that. It's actually very good stuff, so you definitely want to go back in and check things out. This tent to the left here is the Name Raider. It'll allow you to change nicknames. I suppose since that came up, I want to quickly mention that I didn't name my Slowpoke Slow Todd as a to disparage anyone named Todd. It was just a reference to TFS. They had named their Slowpoke after a character in the ring, Samara, so it was Slow Mara. And I wanted to kind of do something similar, but the only horror-ish name that I could think of was Sweeney Todd. So, Slow Todd. Not the best nickname, I'm sure. Anyway... But, uh, you want to come here because we saw that the gym for this city was blocked off and we can't challenge it until we get it cleared up. And this girl right here on the other end of the counter seems very peculiar. So, if we talk to her... Hi, my name is Whitney. I heard about the quiz to win a radio card, so I ha came here to get one. But this quiz is so hard. Okay, well, if it's that hard, let's see what we can do. We have a special quiz campaign. Answer five questions correctly in a row to win a radio card. When you load it into the Poke Gear, you'll be able to listen to the radio. Anytime, anywhere. Would you like to take the quiz? Sure, why not? Might as well upgrade my Poke Gear. Can you check the town map with your Poke Gear? Yes. You are correct. The second question. Eat Arena can only be female. True? Yes. You are correct. Third question. Hurt the Pokeball creator uses apricots as an ingredient. Nope, he uses apricorns. You are correct again. The fourth question. Is impossible to use a TM on Magikarp. True? Yes, I could not learn any TMs. Wow. I have only one more question to go. In Professor Oak's popular show, Pokemon Talk, is he on with Marie? Nope, it's Mary. Bingo, you got it. Congratulations. Here's our prize, a radio card. I you can now listen to the radio with the Poke Gear. You did it! I thought the answer to the third question was surely apricots. Uh, Whitney, I don't mean to disparage, but... Apricorn trees all over. Granted, I know that you're a city girl, so probably not many of them around here, but maybe seeing as you live like a short walk from the Pokeball creator Kurt, you should know this one. Oops, I have to get back to the gym. And as you can see, she was the gym leader who had run off all the way here. So now that we've taken care of that, we can actually go challenge the gym, but I think that I have done quite a bit for today. So, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all next time. Until then, stay gold. Playback sequence terminated. Transmission disconnected.